Okay, everybody, welcome back to USBG Education Week, Palm Week, Palm Beach 2020. Uh, just some quick housekeeping. Again, please keep your phones and your microphones on mute. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat, and then we'll ask them there. This way we don't interrupt the presenter and uh, keep everything flowing. And without further ado, Alex, would you love to uh, introduce our next seminar, please? Of course. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Alex. I'm the current president of USBG Palm Beach. Um, and I am in sunny Lake Worth, Florida here um, at an awesome brewery. It's called Matthew's Brewery. It's a great staple in the local community. So I'm going to give you guys a little tour, walk you back, and introduce you to the owner of the brewery. And it is so quiet and so beautiful. And the hops are overwhelming in abundance. And it's just awesome in here. I wish you guys could be here. One day soon. Some awesome barrels walking in, cool machinery, and here we go. Without further ado, Mr. Dave Matthews, with no relation to other Dave Matthews, Dave. the brewer, and Mr. Bob, I didn't catch your last name, Mr. Bob Stasco, assistant. All right. So I'm Dave Matthews. I'm the owner of Matthews Brewing Company. Matthews, of course, is my last name. I'm also the head brewer here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the beer process today. And Bob's my trusty assistant brewer. He was also a chef for 30 years. So brewing is also, we consider beer a lot like food here. So um, you'll see the different varieties that we have. Um, and we, we follow recipes just like you would with cooking, except we're making beer. So what I'm going to start out with first is, um, now we are a distribution brewery. So we brew beer here for our tap room for customers to come in and drink it. And we also distribute to various restaurants and bars. And we're gonna be going out with canning sometime um, in the near future next year in the first quarter. So let's talk about the beer process. So basically beer consists of four main ingredients. You have water, you have our malt, which is our grains, okay? We have our yeast, so this is, gives it the flavor, as you can see right here. This just get, came shipped to us from California, so they have a yeast company that we use, and I uh, got shipped overnight, so it's gonna be ready to go. We're brewing tomorrow. And then hops, of course, which give the beer its flavor, um, bittering, um, and some aroma. Um, helps out with the hops. We have fellow hops here, which uh, we use a lot. And then you also have whole hops that were kind of used you know, a long time ago, and kind of fellow hops. Um, kind of took their place here, so smell those. Smell pretty great. And then we also have some adjuncts that we use. Um, so once the beer has been um, produced, we may go to a secondary treatment where we add some additional flavorings. These are um, chocolate cocoa nibs. We make a chocolate beer here, so we use that. We also use a lot of, um, we like toasted coconut. We do a toasted coconut cream out, which is a big hit here, so we use fresh toasted coconut. And then we also make a, um, some Belgian style beers here. A lot of the Belgian beers, um, a white beer, will use um, bitter and sweet orange peel and also um, coriander seed that will crush up. And then, so all of these beers use their own water. We've got an RO system right here. So we take the city's water and we knock it down to zero. And then we create our own water for whatever region of beer we're brewing in. So every beer that we brew, create the water in that region. So we can create water from Germany, from Belgium, from California, from any of these types of areas. And how do we do that? We have different various salts that we do our water chemistry on and we'll, we will add beans to our water that we're using. So we have different, about five salts that we use. And um, so that's how we were able to determine the water chemistry. And it's just a program we use. So there's different programs out there that show you the different water chemistry for all these different regions. Once you get the water chemistry for our water, then we know how to, what salts to add to match to that water. And it's just a basic, you know, uh, mathematical formula. So the different grains that we have here though, this is our standard base grain. So when you use just the standard base grain, you're gonna get a lighter colored beer like this Pilsner right here, okay? That's when you're just using a lighter type of grain. This is one of my favorite grains, which is, this is wheat. You can see how the different kernel looks in there, okay? 
Now, once you want, now once you want to start adding color, like this is an amber beer right here. We're going to start using crystal malts, okay? And these come in degrees of, you know, 10 degrees all the way up to, you know, 180 degree Lovey Bond, and that's the color. So this right here is 77 degrees. And then, of course, so that would help produce this amber beer. And also, if you add a little chocolate to that, then we're going to go ahead and be able to produce our brown beer. So we get our colors in the beer from using the different malts. Okay. Now, if we want to produce the sour, of course, we're going to use a lot of dark malts, like the chocolate malt and some black stuff. Very different other malts to get the different colors and some different flavors. But this is the base malt is always the standard what you're using the most of. So that's probably about 80% of the grain bill. And then, like I said before, um, we have the different hops that add your your bittering, your flavor, and your aroma. So we're adding these in the boiling process. So with that, and again, the yeast is the most important part that we'll talk about in a little while. So from my standpoint, the water and the yeast are the most important part of getting the beer to have its own style. That's why every brewery has its own flavor from the water chemistry and from the yeast that they use because all the grains and everything, everybody's kind of using similar hops, similar grains, but the water and the yeast is what differentiates the different breweries. Thanks. So with that, we're going to talk about the, um, the beer process here. At the going on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to crush these kernels right here, okay? which are going to open up this grain so we can get to the starches inside here. So that's the very first thing that we want to do. We want to just crush these, open them up, so we can get to that starch that's inside that kernel right there. And how do we do that? This is our malt mill right here. So I don't know if you can see this or not. It's called the Sasquatch. Okay. So what we do is we have all the grain that we're going to use for our, our recipe that we're going to do. We put it in here, and this has a roller mill that crushes the grain, and it lifts it up here using this chain disc system. Okay, it'll go through here. We'll turn it on real quick so you can hear it. Okay. And all we're doing at this point 
is we're going to sprinkle this with hot water at 170 degrees. Once all of this mash has been moved over here, we're going to sprinkle it with hot water. And all we're trying to do is, is transfer the sugar over here to this brew kettle. So again, all we're trying to do right now is to capture all the sugar that's in this grain. But that's what's going to make our beer. Okay. This process, again, here, this may take a couple of hours to, uh, to put the water in there. And, and the way that we do that is basically just up here. I'll show you real quick. Like this. That's how we spray the grain with water right there. So basically when that water hits the grain, it's grabbing the sugars and we're coming over to here. Okay, so we do have to mix it with more water because it's the water and the sugar is what's gonna make the beer. So after about two hours, we're we're lottering that over here to the boil kettle. Now this is kind of where everything's gonna happen in our boil kettle. And this is also where right now all we have is sugar water here and we're gonna boil it, okay? 215 degrees for about 90 minutes. And this is where we're adding our hops. So if we add the hops in early, it's going to give us more bittering. If we had the hops in, hops in in the middle, it's going to give us more flavor. And if we had to add the hops in at the end, it's going to give us more aroma. So the hops are really what's going to give us the flavor of the beer. Okay. And that's going to happen here in the boil kettle. And so we may boil this again for about 90 minutes is, is typically how we boil it. Then what we want to do after it's completed, not fall down the stairs <laughs> we're going to we're going we're going to whirlpool this boil kettle because what happens is we have a lot of truck and particles from the hops and from the malt that are in the beer and when we do a whirlpool it takes all of that truck down here to the bottom okay and it's going to stay there and then what we're going to do is we're going to pump the wort right here so we call it wort so all we produce right now is just sugar water no beer yet we're going to pump this wort, which is maybe at this point, 200 degrees through this heat exchanger. Okay. Which is going to knock this beer down to 68 degrees. This is a very cool piece of equipment. You just have hot water coming in, cold water, cold water coming in and then wort going out. So it's just going to knock it down. It's a heat exchanger. So basically we're going to take the, the 68 degree wort. We're going to put it into our fermenter here, which this holds. 630 gallons, which is about 20 barrels of beer. Okay. Now, once we get it into the fermenter, it takes about half an hour. We're going to pitch that yeast that I showed you. Okay. We want to pitch that yeast as soon as possible. Once that yeast gets in there, it's going to start activating. And the yeast is going to eat that sugar and produce the alcohol. And that's what we're trying to do. So uh, that's the big part of producing beer. Is that's why I said the yeast is so important because that's what's going to do all the work for us in order to um, produce the alcohol that everybody wants, wants to drink. So basically, once we get the beer into the fermenter, we're going to pitch the yeast. This process is going to go on for about seven to ten days. Okay. Then after about ten days at sixty-eight degrees, we're going to raise the temperature for you know two or three days to knock out any undesirable flavors. Then we're going to crash it down to 32 degrees, and that's real important. So 32 degrees, we want to get this down to 32 degrees for about three days. And then also, you can see the cone shape here. This also has a lot of shrub and debris, but maybe we're adding more hops. This is where, you know, we want to add maybe some of these other flavorings that I just showed you, okay? And then basically, once all that stuff comes down to this cone, we're dumping it off of the beer, okay? We're taking all of the byproduct off of the beer. And then we're going to transfer this over to the bright tanks where we're going to carbonate it. So this whole process here of just brewing the beer in order to make sugar water is about an eight to nine hour process. Okay. Once it goes into the fermenter, this is about another two to three week process. Okay. So basically that's about say anywhere from three weeks to Make a beer and then ferment the beer. It's about three weeks. Okay. Look at these barrels. They're pretty beautiful. Yeah. So these What's are the story? Some, these are our um, whiskey barrels that we do have here. So we do some barrel aging. These are from uh, Jack Daniels, uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee. 
So we do some uh, higher gravity beers and put them in here. So like nice. Beer, so. That's awesome. And as we know, as bartenders, those are not cheap. So then the bar is laid out pretty good. And then we have over here, these are our, our bright tanks here. So they call these bright tanks, but this is where you're going to, you know, carbonate the beer and get ready to serve it. So they're also serving tanks. So the beer comes over here and then we'll um, we'll carbonate it up within one or two days, let it condition for a few days, we'll put it into the keg, and then it's ready to serve. And what a lot of people don't know is beer actually gets better as it ages, but then it's going to plateau and it's going to start degrading. So most beers, um, like the higher um, alpha IPAs, have about a shelf life of about three months and then they start degrading. Your darker beers, they can last longer than that. So the average shelf life, maybe you could say is four, years, four months for a beer, then it's going to start degrading. So that's why you always want to look at the date when you're buying beer in a can or something out of at a grocery store. Because if it's if it's out of date, it's not gonna be as fresh as, as it should be and it's not gonna taste as good. Why do you think darker beers or why do darker beers last longer? Is because it more I, sugar? I, I think it's because they have less hops in them and the hops is what will start, you know, Turning. degrading. And then okay. how do we get from that side to this side? Is it all through the ceiling? So or no, has this, this is, through... we, just, we just attach a hose and it goes okay. by gravity. Okay, cool. So it goes by gravity over here, along with pushing the CO2 in there. So we're pushing CO2. We're not pumping it. The less you pump a beer, the better off the beer is going to be. So we try to use gravity as much as possible here. So what we're going to do now, this is a little amber beer that we, we put in here. Um, we carbonated this up on 10th of the second. So um, there's nothing better than taking you know, fresh beer right out of the, uh, right out of the fermenter. So this is Night Moves, which is our Amber Ale. We're a big music place here, so if you like a little Bob Seger, you would like our uh, Night Moves. Oh, they're gonna let me have some. Sorry guys, don't be jealous. I know it's only noon, but this is too awesome. That's one of the bad problems here with the brewery. We've got to start tasting beer like at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> At least it's not, I don't know, distilleries are a little harder to drink, right? So this is our amber, which is a, a nice little amber beer, just malty, has a little bit of carbon flavor in there, not too hoppy. Cheers, Bob. Cheers, Dave. Happy education day, guys. So these are our kegs that we, uh, that we put the beer in right here. So we've got some beer that we're going to be kegging up uh, later this week. What we'll do now is I'll take you over to our so when you're tasting beer, what notes are you looking for? Is it similar to spirits or? It is, well, it depends on beer. So for this particular beer, we're looking for malt and we're looking for sweetness. We're not looking for bitterness. Okay. So you can take a taste of this. You'll see that it's smooth, it's sweet. And we're also looking for the right carbonation. So this has about a 2.7 CO2 on there. So it's right where it needs to be. You don't want it to be flat. But you don't want it to be too carbonated either because even here we've got a, a nice big draft system here but if you go to some of these mom and pop places that don't have that type of draft system and you over carbonate the beer it's going to be all foam i'm sure people have gone to places before and they're pouring the beer and it's coming out all foamy it's because they have like a lesser expensive type of draft system and the beer may be a little over carbonated for them thanks This is like the mother <laughs> So this is our money room where we have all our beers. Um, we've had them picked up from our distributor. So uh, they get them here about every two weeks. We also have all our hops up here on the wall. Those are like all storage. Then right here is all of the chemicals. Believe it or not, 90% of brewing is cleaning. So we use caustic and we use acid. So we have a lot of corrosive um, chemicals here that we have to be very careful with when we clean our facilities. So every time we brew, the next day we're cleaning. So then the next day we brew, then we clean. So there's a lot of cleaning here along with these, you know, kind of dangerous chemicals here. Because if, you're, if your tanks aren't clean, 
your beer is going to be, it's not going to be good. It's going to be infected. You don't want to infect the beer. It may not happen right then, but a month later, it'll start getting off flavors from it. So I'm going to show you a little bit more piece of equipment. I'm going to show you our boiler, which is a pretty cool piece of equipment. So you don't see a lot of boilers in Florida, but you do up north where they put these in the basement to provide their heating. But brewers, we found out that it's a lot more cost effective to brew our beer and heat up our kettle with, with steam rather than electricity. So this right here is a boiler that uses gas and it, uh, we heat up our, our facilities, our vessels by just using steam. It's a pretty neat piece of uh, Right over here, we'll show you. We have a little, we have a little canning machine here from uh, Wild Goose. So we do do some of our own canning. We're going to start canning a little bit more at the uh, first of the year. So it's pretty awesome. So it's a nice, cool little canning. <coughs> we do a lot of different bottling and canning here. We've got a lot of different devices for that. So this this is just all of our grain. So you can see we get grain from from all over the world. This is from from England here. We've got uh, this grain over here is from Germany. So whatever the style of beer that we're brewing, we use the grain from that region. So we're always trying to brew the style here. So um, so we This is an important piece of equipment. They're never ending keg washing. So when our kegs are empty, they come on here and we clean them and they get sanitized. So we've got a, uh, we can do three at a time at semi-automatic. So you just put the keg on there, push a button and boom, it's clean. Thanks. So while we're here, we've got a, we also have a little pilot system. So our, our big brewery is a 15 barrel brewery so a barrel is 31 gallons of beer so you can see that we can brew a lot more beer on that we've got this little two barrel pilot system where we brew our cask beers and also our experimentals or if we're going to do a new recipe so what we'll do is um for a new recipe we'll come here first start with a little two barrel get it to where we want it to be then we'll move it up to the bigger system so we do a lot of uh a lot of beers here. Now, one of the things that I had talked about was we're just producing sugar water and then we add the yeast. So here's one where the yeast right now is eating the sugar, converting it to alcohol and pushing the carbon dioxide out. So this is working right now. You can see it pushing the carbon dioxide out. So right now the yeast is doing its job, making alcohol. So as you can see too, we like, we're a big music place here. We have all our tanks made you know, some of our our favorite bands. So usually we have the music blare right now with some Metallica, but we're uh, taking it easy for you guys today. So this again, this is this is a, a system just like this big system I showed you. This is the mash tun. This is our uh, hot liquor tank over here, and here we mash and sparge, and this this is our boil kettle. So it's just a smaller system than our bigger system, but it takes just as long to pour, to brew on the small system as it does on the big system. So if there's any home brewers out there, it may take you all day to brew five gallons. It takes that same amount of time to brew a hundred barrels. So it's the same process. So, and this is also computerized. That's the, my, my background, I was a professional engineer before I started the brewery and I sold my engineering company and started the brewery, but then that's why I like to have everything computerized. It's pretty neat. Give a little show of our of our kegs in the bathroom. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we have a that's where we put the kegs at. <laughs> that's awesome. Just out of curiosity, how much money do you think is in this whole facility? Just I think for well, I bought the building and I redid the building and I bought two pieces of land for the um, for the parking lots and then the equipment itself is I got about two point seven million dollars in there. So I sold my engineering okay, cool. company and put all my savings into this. So it's a little bit of a roll of dice, but we'll see what happens. So, so far, so good. 
I'm, a, I'm one of the few places a lot of breweries have got investors that own them or restaurant groups. So this is one where it's just one owner here, and then I'm also the brewer, so which is I can control the product, which I like. So, so what we can do now, we'll, we'll go down and talk about beers. So we have 14 beers on tap at any given time. We have right here is our Hefeweizen, which is a German style beer, which has a little bit of a banana and the clove flavor in it. We have Florida Haze, which is our hazy New England style beers, which are a big right now. And it's one of my favorite beers. We have White Goblin, which is a Belgian wit beer from, um, from Belgium. This is one where we use the coriander and the orange peel that I showed you to has a little bit of spice in the beer. We've got Accelerate IPA, which is our American IPA. So this is our number one beer that's out in distribution. So this is just a high hockey um, IPA. We've got um, Junkyard Dog, which is our brown ale. This is an English style brown ale. Uh, we have uh, Sweet Emotion. Again, this is very significant. You can see our songs here. And um, this is a cream ale that we use. This is also the base beer when we do our toasted coconut cream ale that just flies off the shelf here. This is the uh, Night Moves that we tasted just a little while ago, uh, Amber Ale. We also have a little Blonde Ale here called uh, Pocket Change. Uh, we have a sour also that we do here called uh, Neon Passion. This one's a little different where we're using a wild yeast in this, and then we use um, dragon fruit and we use um, passion fruit. I'll show you the color of this. So this one is definitely a little different. So the dragon fruit gives it that color right there. This is my favorite. Yep. I love it. And then we have our a Ciaison, which is our uh, farmhouse Ciaison called Gypsy. We have Florida Hop Juice, which is probably my favorite beer. Um, it's a hazy LL. We've got um, 561 Bilsner. And then we have uh, Black Metallic, which is our stout, which is on which is on Nitro. This also, of course, pretty cool too here. So all of these beers are off the CO2. This is the one beer that we have off of my intro. So it's kind of more like a Guinness. So we have a lot of Florida here. We have a lot of music. So that's kind of what Matthew did. Some of our cans have to use. Yeah. We sell cans. The all the game designs and I get with an illustrator kind of give them my sketches dog here it's a, a dog again our, our logo is a dog so we're a big dog friendly here so this is a junkyard dog protecting uh, the brewery at night over here for us and we have a pocket change which is a new Blondell. this is a beer that we is a little bit more cost effective and what we did is uh, we, we just played off uh, pocket change and then, of course, the little blonde here has got a little bit of money in her back pocket for some, uh, for some beer pocket change. Then we have Florida Hop Juice, which is a big juice bomb. We've got a hop jumping into um, a glass of orange juice. So when we first started here, we were just using these Crowler cans. Once we started our own can designs, we sold 50% more. So you can see marketing does in beer make a big deal. I mean, look at Budweiser, how bad that beer is, but they have a lot of marketing, so they can sell a lot of it. Shots now, 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 another thing that we do, which is different from a lot of breweries, is we do English style beers here, which are poured through a beer engine. So the little two barrel system that we do, we do a lot of cask ale, and that's called real beer, and it's beer that's alive. So we're not we're not hitting that with CO two like we do over here for the draft system. This just gets hit with some sugar, and it naturally carbonates. Okay, so if you're this over in England, point. this is what you're going to see, and these are authentic beer engines. From England. So this is an ESB that we have here. And so when you're pouring a beer here, again, it's not CO2 is it's pushing the beers out on the draft system. Here, this beer engine is pouring the beer and it and you're creating so you're carbonating it by hand. I'm carbonating it by hand. And I can control the, the the head level on here. So I'm just this beer engine just pulling out the cask here. And this is served at 50 degrees. A lot of people think, well, 50 degrees, the beer is going to be warm. But if it's 50 degrees outside, are you wearing a sweater? Probably so. So let's see. 
that's kind of a little bit of a misnomer, but there you go. So that's our, our cast condition beer there, which is more of a natural flavor beer that you're going to get when you go over to England or Ireland or, or European space. Excuse me, the cast condition beer. Awesome. So also, as you can see, this is our tap room. We have a lot of murals here. Uh, you know, we like a lot of different stuff. This is the Highway to Hill tap room because we are a big rock place. But uh, we have some of our murals on the wall. Um, and we have Underdog up here. <laughs> we, got a, we, have a, we have a Jimmy Hendrix sound matrix mural over here. We also have our um, Florida Hot Streets over here along with some you know, awards that we've won. This is one of my favorite here. Um, Matthew's brewing the wall, so like pink boy. And we got Kurt Cobain over here. Nice. I, I, so this is the tap room. What's great about the, the way it works in, in Florida, we have Florida has a bunch of crazy walls. They make it tough for brewers. So in a tap room, when you come in here to buy a beer, all the money that is spent stays with the brewery. Okay. And and when I go to distribution. You know, I have to sell that beer at a wholesale rate to the distributor, and we don't make as much money. So we always like people to, hey, come in here and get your beer to go. There's a lot of breweries in Florida now, so instead of going to Publix and so forth, go to the brewery. Because that helps that brewery stay open because they don't have to split that money with the distributor. Of course, we still have to pay taxes. We have to pay federal taxes and state taxes and sales tax on, you know, our products here. So we get hit with a lot of a lot of taxes but i always tell people come to the brewery the beer is going to be freshest at the brewery and then you're also helping that brewery stay open by uh, by buying the beer right there but the money stays in his pocket so if anyone is interested in opening a brewery we have a question what is the difference between wet hops versus dry hops in the brewing process well basically dry hops are the hops that i had showed you that were basically in those jars over there so a wet hop is going to come and that's going to be recently harvested okay so you're going to be it's going to be fresher and you're going to get more flavor off a wet hop than a dry hop is going to have some age on it so again what happens with hops just like with anything as stuff ages you're starting to use the lose the ibus and the flavors off of it okay so if you have a wet hop it's going to have more flavor and ibus and it's not going to start deteriorating yet so that's the main difference between a dry hop and a wet hop and that's kind of new the the, the wet hop has just come out what do you think Ago. Yeah, just a few years ago. Now we just use dry hops here, so we just use the dry hops here. So, but they have come out now with the filet mignon of hops. So basically, what happens is I don't know if you've seen like a hop tree looks just kind of like a wine tree, okay, a vineyard, okay. And when they're making the hop, they're pulling the hops off, but you're also getting the stem and all of that goes into that hop. So you're getting vegetative, okay. So if this new super hop that they have come out. All they're doing is pulling the hops, so you're not getting any of that vegetative, okay? And that's probably the same thing with a wet hop, that you're getting more of the actual hop and not any of the stem and so forth, okay? So you're getting more of a hop flavor, because when you start getting the stem and everything mixed in and the leaves, you get a little bit of a vegetative flavor in the hop. So what we do now, we'll show you our outside area where we have all our, our live music. So even though we're a brewery, we're a big live music thing. We're here in Lake Worth. So we're in Lake Worth Beach, um, near the downtown area, one block off of uh, Dixie, one block, I would say, north of Lake. And we have a, um, you know, I would say that we're kind of industrial type flair here at the at the brewery. Yeah. So we have a we have a five thousand square foot beer garden where of course people can bring their dogs and come hang out. We have bands that play on the weekends, sometimes on weeknights, uh, here on our stage. Uh, we've got a big open area, so you can breathe a lot of fresh air out here. So uh, we also have a lot of murals here too. The guy that does most of my murals is Funky Paint. He's located down in Boca Raton. Um, you know we got. Um, Chris Cornell, which is our main guy that we like. Got a little Tom Petty for you here. Got a little Queen over here for you. And then we have uh, the Flash over here at the end. Then we have some of our, 
our beards over here in Florida Hayes, White Goblin, and uh, Bob's virtual girlfriend on the wall over here. <laughs> it's awesome. Or Veronica. Veronica. <laughs> she looks like a Viviana to me. And this, so this, this, uh, this is where we bring the food trucks in out here on the back. That's our chiller right there, which keeps all the beer, you know, cold that we need to have. We're getting ready to build a, um, a big kitchen up back here, and we're going to put the stage back here because we're going with a bigger music live music here sometime next year. So that's what our our plans out here are right now. Awesome. And then we've got uh, we've got two lots uh, not too far from here, which is for parking, and then there's also on street parking. So we have a lot of parking, and parking's free here. And also music is free. So you go to a lot of venues, you know, you got to go downtown. It's $10 for an hour. Here it's free. And, the, and we don't charge a cover charge for the music. Awesome. And then we also we have food trucks. So we rotate food trucks here. So we always have food. For example, tomorrow we've got the lobster truck, Cousins Main Lobster. You'll see people lined up all the way out that door for this Main Lobster to get crazy for. So. That's great. So that's that's kind of what we have here in a nutshell. We're... we're Brewery, music, and dogs. And then the business for the for, for the brewery, you see the logo? That was my dog. So um, the business here is is basically, so we're brewing beer. One, we're selling it in the tap room. That's one business. Two, we sell beer to go out of the tap room. That's the second business. Then third, we sell beer to our distributor who takes it to restaurants and bars. So we've got three different kind of businesses um, going on here when we brew the beer, which is kind of which kind of neat. So that kind of helps the brewery stay open. And the reason why you've seen a lot more breweries now than you did 10 years ago or 15 years ago, because you weren't allowed to sell beer out of the brewery and keep that money. So the distributors were fighting that. Um, but now the laws change. So any beer that we sell out of the brewery, we can keep, which helps the brewery stay open. So that's a new law. And that's why you're seeing all the breweries pop up. Let's support local and support our brewers. Main mission. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all of this knowledge. I'm definitely going to rewatch this a few times because there's so many cool things. Um, does anyone have any questions? I mean, we covered a lot here. So um, if you do have questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And then we can reach out to Dave and he can go through once we post this on our um, social media. Um, we do have a question. When is happy hour? <laughs> it's uh, 3.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, a dollar off pint. So nice. come down here today. We actually have a band tonight. we got Sons of a Tradesman's playing. We've got a um, Frank and Heffy hot dog party that's going to be here. So we've got a, little, <laughs> got a little party going on here tonight. And on Sons a of a Tradesman night. is um, very rock and roll focused. Very, oh, yeah. very cool guys. If you guys don't know them locally. So sweet. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, please just reach out. And I'll see you all later. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Bob. See ya. Perfect. So, guys, keep logged in. Take a break. Go to the bathroom. Grab something to eat. Grab something to drink. Uh, alcoholic or not, that it's up to you. It is, uh, as John Moore says, sober October. And uh, we'll see you at the next seminar at 105.